Namaste and welcome to this amazing new podcast with Sathology. And you're welcome to your, your meeting, David Trujillo. And he loves the name Dave. And he kindly allowed us to use his beautiful gym here. And those of you who are in the USA, connected to us, then you can visit in, in USA Temecula. And I'll send you the link of this gym. And you should definitely come out and see. Here they create fighters, the real ones. Uh, you have, uh, Dave, you have a long uh, experience with the youth of this community. How do you see, how do you describe a youth normal here? Well, in Temecula, we have a great diverse um, culture. Um, we have a very large American native culture here uh, from the Luceno Indians, Diseño, Cupeño, and uh, Apache as well. Now, the native, uh, the Ende Apache is now prevalent here in Southern California and in the surrounding cities of uh, Temecula, Fallbrook, and all of the uh, southern part of California. We are around the Marine Corps base, the military base, so there's a lot of military families here. Uh, and there's everybody, it's a full diverse of, of, of people uh, and melting pot here in Temecula. So um, we, we work with them all. We work with everybody. There's no creed, race, color, religion that we claim we are neutral to everybody and we are a safe haven. Um, the Ende Apache tribe is um, a tribe here to build bridges and to continue to share our cultures and our history with everybody who is interested and willing and wanting to learn. That being said, we're bringing this culture back here to Temecula Valley uh, through our gym and throughout Southern California through House of Pain Boxing, which we are in the Apache. <laughs> I like the name House of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's opposite of what you're trying to do. Removing pain, but you say House of Pain. You know, I've never been one to uh, go with the flow of something that uh, really, uh, how, how do you say, everything that we do has an innuendo to it. And House of Pain was founded by um, a mentor of ours, and he's actually a younger mentor than mine, uh, but he's a promoter in, uh, in, in Colorado, and his name is uh, Stephen Mestis. Uh, we all started out at 20th Street Gym in downtown Denver. Um, I was there in a program underneath Ron Lyle at one point, plus I traveled through a couple of other gyms, St. Charles and uh, Rudy Park and, and, and whatnot. But um, I had left in 89, and Steve Mestis and those guys, they were still there, and they, they left 20th Street Gym little by little and created uh, the House of Pain. Mm -hmm. So the House of Pain, what it means to us is what you, the pain that you suffer and endure in here will take you to the depths of yourself so that you can learn who you are. You know, nothing, nothing better to learn who you are when it gets down to the nitty gritty of pushing yourself beyond the limits you never thought you could reach. So, you know, I, in West Virginia, I participated in a Native American lodge mm -hmm. many times. And we were given the experience of being in the womb of the mother. And, and when you are in that, it's not the lodge which, uh, other people, it's a, it's, a, it's a Native American lodge, and where people in heat, they cry out, and they want to experience the spiritual ecstasy over there. It, very interesting, you mentioned the, the culture and religion, but you did not mention language. Why? Well, language, is, the reason why is because we are, we use the English language here. Uh, and that's how we all communicate with each other. A lot of local tribes still carry their own language and what have you. Uh, unfortunately for my family and for the way we came up, uh, we were lost in our American Native culture for a long time uh, due to political reasons in the areas and the times that we were growing up in Colorado, northern New Mexico, uh, New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, it was pretty much hidden from us, uh, and they wanted us to be uh, strictly Americans uh, for our benefit, so they felt. So now here we are. 
because the language plays a very important role in colonization, very important role. Because the, the, what they do is like, uh, like in computers, the language is used to program a computer. Mm -hmm. For a human mind, language works similar to that programming. Mm -hmm. Because the, the language which you speak predicts the behavior which you will have. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a direct correlation. Mm -hmm. So people, communities who do not uh, speak, speak language, like I speak uh, nine Indian languages wow. and English. And so, so that's why I tell people, I cannot add Spanish to my language because I already know too many languages. Mm -hmm. It's easy, easy to pick up. Mm -hmm. But the language plays such a role, it wires your brain in a different way. Mm -hmm. One of my books I wrote was Transcending the Mind. Mm -hmm. and, and the, so nowadays they say L NLM, keywords, mm -hmm. programming your brain, programming your mind. Mm -hmm. And like the, wor the word stress creates stress. Mm -hmm. Is is that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So so would you be would you be open to the idea that bringing the script of the local languages here and let people more speak in local languages? Would you think that led? You know, um, right now what we're doing is I'm I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because. Uh, we have native, uh, local natives that are um, still practicing their language and they're teaching their, the, the children on their, on their uh, reservations uh, to continue the language, which we're very proud and happy uh, for them. Um, that being said, uh, we welcome it here. Um, there's a lot of dialects of, of native language here uh, in Southern California. Uh, so um, we we do we would like to see a lot more of that happen. Like I said, uh, we have grown apart or or been drifted apart for various reasons uh, because uh, from our culture, and we're a lot of us are still being reintroduced back into our culture, and a lot of us know that there is a big gap in our history. And they still have to figure out where that is. So I, I suggest that if you think you're native or somebody has said you're American native, whether it's Apache, whether it's, it doesn't matter, Comanche, whether you're Arapaho, you, no matter what, do the research. Do, get in there, do the research. It'll connect you little by little. And uh, if you want to know anything from the uh, Apache tribe, you can reach out to us and uh, we will help you uh, figure out exactly where you fit in or we'll help you find your tribe, actually. But we do, um, w that is something we want to bring back and bring it into our cultures. So when I was speaking with the chief, he mentioned about the DNA testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things which I wrote in my book, that the DNA testing is the biggest fraud on this earth. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, and uh, I would like, experts to challenge me on there because the, the predetermine, my friend who has never been out of India, mm -hmm. his six generations never been out of India. So when this DNA test was conducted, his DNA came out to be his Native American. And I said, how is it possible? It's like 300 years that man has never reached out, his family has never reached out. Mm. And then they said, the Native American, and then they said he's half Arabic, and half finish, mm. and I was totally this. Then I researched a little bit on the DNA testing itself, mm. because this is what people say, that you can do DNA testing and you know, like somebody was telling me, I'm 15% French, 2% Spanish, 3% Italian. I said, that's a dog breed. That's not really a human being, <laughs> because you are just telling you exactly like how you breed a dog. So how do you, and the DNA testing, the the premise of DNA testing is to find out how much European ancestry that person has. Mm -hmm. That's how the tests are arranged. Mm -hmm. So anybody who gets tested will s claim to be from Europe. And Europeans say they are Caucasians, which is from northern Iran. And uh, so now they have reclassified people like me as brown Caucasians. Mm. <laughs> My birth certificate like, says I'm white. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm saying. How, how truthful you can say. So my alternative theory to this is that, like I said, the mind is programmable. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is not. 
mm. intelligence programs the mind so so when you say that like uh, so people's beliefs people's languages people's acceptance of whatever they you know i don't care whether somebody says i'm fan of i worship mickey mouse i don't care Mm -hmm. You can have Mickey Mouse or you can worship Donald Duck. I don't care mm -hmm. because I believe in three things: food, language, and method of worship. Not who you worship, mm -hmm. method of worship. Constitute a culture, mm -hmm. and that's my own unique theory, which I've been teaching to everybody. And I may be totally wrong, but I, there's no other thing I see tri in triangulation. So, so in your experience, my question was a little bit long. Was that? Was that? See every. Do you think you, can you really rely on DNA testing, or you tell people, do you want to learn Apache culture? And if you think you are an Apache, you are welcome. What do you say? I would say yes, but also do your do your. You don't have to really necessarily go through your DNA. Um, the way that uh, Nantan Chief Angel and I found each other was through family tree, and that family tree. Um, sent us to uh, New Mexico and it was the names of the Indians or the the native the American natives at the time that were changed to Spanish names or sometimes Dutch names or what have you or even other names that that were changed we were able to he was able to connect me to him through a family of the Sanchez's so it directly put us in line with each other of a family um, so you can try the DNA, but it's really your family tree and your roots. If your family has told you in the past and you come from a background like mine where we didn't learn Spanish, we didn't learn our Indian language, we only learned English because of the blueprint that was put upon us. And uh, that being said, um, you know, we were told here and there that we were Apache uh, from uh, New Mexico and in all reality now that we've researched we have family Chiricahua Apache all the way down into uh, deep in New Mexico uh, whether it's um, Zacatecas or any of the surrounding areas down there all the way up through the southwestern corridor all the way up to Canada so the Apache bloodline was nomadic so there we have the bloodline spread all over and throughout the years being that we are a sovereign people we have actually just blended into the cultures of what's happening here in the United States and we are trying to get our tribe back and so we could bring back the uh, the strength of the Apache Indian we we there are some reservations that they chose some people have chose to be a part of uh, but uh, we believe in what our chief believes in, which is our ancestor and great-great-grandfather, Geronimo, uh, to follow uh, his lead on being a sovereign people. And that means being still being nomadic and still being able to travel and still being able what we can do between all the North Americas, from, New, from Mexico, uh, the, the United States, to uh, Canada, and, and through there. So that's... Where, where our beliefs are now, and we, we want to continue that. And when I met Chief, he actually filled a huge part of my life that I knew that I had been missing. And a lot of my family has been missing. And, uh, you, know, we, they, you know, we want to invite them to research with us and join us, and, and, and let's, get this, let's get back together and bring, our, uh, bring back our, our bloodline. And, you know, but, and like I said, too, we, it, we invite everybody. The gym here, multicultural, and the narrative is that we accept everybody. We're build, uh, bridge builders. Uh, we are a safe haven. Um, we want to attract that through not only our gym, but through the boxing uh, world that we're in. We do everything from boxing management boxing promotions, events, or what have you. And House of Pain Southern California is now dedicated and designed to work with all the, all the Native Americans or American Natives in the uh, reservations and bringing them together and giving them 
another, um, how do you say, another out put into the United States through nutrition, boxing, exercise, everything to that nature because uh, there's a lot of, lot of young people out there that are still have the warrior blood and whatever they had and we want to bring it out and use it here on, on, a, on a stage and teach them uh, basically about themselves and how to be uh, productive members of the society that we're in now but to also hold on to our, our culture. You mentioned two important words and I really ca caught on to Nantana for the chief mm -hmm. and also sovereign. You mentioned the word sovereign and it's a very powerful word. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, now we know from the chief and, and many people and also my own research that the many of the, the natives of this country never surrendered, never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of really, in terms of accepting the, the signed, the constitution has no signature of Native American. Mm -hmm. It's all signature of Anglo-Saxons who ran away from Church of England. So the Freedom Declaration was Anglo-Saxons from Church of England. Mm -hmm no native was involved. Mm -hmm. So it's a, and, and when they say they discovered a new world in discovery, so what are finders keepers, mm -hmm. that logic. How do you agree with that finders keepers? Well, I don't have a choice to agree with it or not. It's happened and it's happening, okay? But what I do have a choice of is knowing who I am, who, what my culture is, where we came from, uh, and the spirituality of the end day Apache tribes and the spirituality of the American natives. That is where we, they can't take from us. Uh, it doesn't fall into any blueprint. You know, it's uh, who we are. We were medicine people, healers, uh, nomadics. Um, and that's what we are embracing and that's what we have to teach our youth that are coming up, whether they're part of the Ende Apache tribe or if they're part of Pachanga, Saboba, Pala, any of the uh, local tribes or any of the tribes all over the United States, um, the ones that are outside of the reservations, we can still keep that. And that's our spirit, and that's something they can't take from us. And uh, my name, Chief, actually named me one with spirit. So I truly, I, I believe it, I live it, and I teach it. And that's with everybody and anybody. Be who you are. It doesn't matter what blueprint we're in. Uh, we still have our own spirit, and that's something that can't be taken away from us. So how do you, uh, if my question to you is like, uh, and you're doing a tremendous work, and uh, for viewers I would say, House of Pain, you should join. If you're in San Diego or somewhere else, you should come and join him and look at the energy. He's like, I'm getting goosebumps with his energy. Then the, he's inspiring youth. One think like you, you gave me so many things to question now and, and also seek answers from you. Like one of the things I really want to see is, uh, or just uh, to learn maybe, not to see, to learn is how do you accept the fact that uh, finders keepers, number one, it has already happened, you answered that correctly. And the second is like how do you reconcile to the fact that the people have to give up and the give up their culture and the land or did you ever reconcile to that? You know, I feel wherever I'm at is where it's just like our creator God. Uh, wherever I'm at, that's, what I, uh, that's who I am. It doesn't matter what culture and society that I'm in. I am who I am. Uh, regardless, I will not change myself for any and any, anything out there to satisfy anybody else's cultures or to satisfy the culture of the United States. Um, uh, I understand the rules and the bylaws and, and everything of the United States. We're here. There's nothing we can do about it, so we follow those laws as well. The Constitution, we follow it the same as uh, the, anybody here in the United States. Um, so, you know, that being said, uh, we have to create it within ourselves, and we have to create it amongst our people that we're with and build upon that. It doesn't mean that we're separating ourselves from anybody. What it means is we're bringing everybody in to right. share our culture with. This way it expands and it grows as time goes on because we have been hidden for so long. And we're the first Americans. We're the ones that were here. 
whether we whether they try to tell us we came over the Bering Straits, it doesn't matter. We were here. Okay, I'm not going to say anything that it, it is what it is. So what are we doing now? You know, now we have to be, we have to live in the blueprint, but yet we could use our spirits to train the people. It, the spirit here is what is how everybody gets trained. And it doesn't matter what culture they are, whether they're little kids, whether they're, you know, teenagers, adults, we bring everybody in, special needs, everybody. And we show them our culture, not by telling them, but by doing it. And that's the warrior spirit that our forefathers have given us through the American Native people all over the, the United States and North Americas. You mentioned about you were the medicine men, your healers. Mm -hmm. Very strong word. Mm -hmm. Healer is something which can heal people on the mind level, at the body level, at the spirit level. A lot of levels are there. Mm -hmm. And for any society to develop, and you also said the warriors, we are warriors, the society needs businessmen, society needs healers, society needs thinkers, society needs workers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, society cannot function. Mm -hmm. So what is your idea from the community point of view a society, a stable society? Well, we're business people. I've been in business since 98 we've owned multiple businesses the Apache the end day Apache and the Apaches that I know come from all backgrounds or come from all types of educational backgrounds we got military lawyers doctors you name it we have it we are we are educated people we have had to be educated people to survive in this type of society so we had to mimic and do everything that society has given us uh, and it's okay to do that because that's how we get around here but like we said again and all goes back to the spirit the spirit of the warriors or what have you what we do here is is uh, taking our youth and giving them our warrior spirits and, and, and that, that's, that has a lot of base behind it, along with God and the Creator. You know, God our Creator is given us our spirits to teach these kids how to battle now into a future that is unknown. Right now we're on the cusp of an, uh, we, we are, it's already confused. We are so confused. That's why everybody needs to tap back in to who they truly are. This way that you have that base. So at least I know, no matter what happens outside these walls or my world, I know who I am. Everybody that follows me and comes to us, they know who they are. And no matter what culture they are, they, they have a base and they know they can walk out into this world with confidence, power of the mind of their own to achieve anything that they possibly can and can endure pain. Pain on multiple levels from uncomfort to the most excruciating pain of losing loved ones like you wouldn't believe. That's what we are here to teach, and that's the warrior spirit. It's not necessarily always beating somebody up. We do that in the ring. We do a lot of that. But it's teaching these kids the warrior spirit to have to go outside in this society and to blend into this society and actually work it for their advantage. I've worked the society for my advantage. I had no choice. Okay, I'm here and this has came, to, I've come here with so many different background, no education, partial education, I should say. Um, family taught us how to work. That's one thing our families did was teach us how to work. And then we took it from there. Um, but to become businessmen, to become you know, uh, any type of hierarchy of who our tribe is or what we are, we have to teach our kids to follow these, these patterns that we created. And that's what House of Pain is here to do. Thank you so much. I think your, your, your talk is so inspiring. Thank you. I love it because I feel that the way you are connecting people or youth, bringing back and you're absolutely right, the, the times are so uncertain right now, geopolitically or American political atmosphere, 
economic future mm -hmm. and where people need like a your kind of message to bring back the original identity and be successful in the real world mm -hmm. yeah. so thank you so much Dave what you're doing thank and you. I really love you're my friend for life now oh, yeah. <laughs> you're my friend yeah. too thank you Adi. and uh, really inspiring really inspiring and and my my whole work is with the youth Mm -hmm. And because the, you need not only you get need to have to keep your body strong, strong, but you also keep your mind also very uh, clean and simple, stable, mm -hmm. and you make your intelligence sharper. Because without the intelligence being sharp, it's impossible to lead a very healthy life. But thank you, and I, I'm sure many of your students have gotten away from bad habits also because of your training, right? You know, we have some good success stories, and I'll share the main one right now with you. And there's multiples, but the one I will share with you is Jimmy Nunez. Jimmy Nunez is a, a Saboba native Indian uh, from in San Jacinto. He grew up at, in the street life of Hammett in San Jacinto. Um, he grew up with the drugs, with the alcohol the gang banging, just uh, what a lot of our youth go through. And this young man came to me four years ago, asked to be, uh, said he wanted to turn pro by his 27th birthday, I believe it was the 27th birthday, he was 26 at the time. And uh, he was actually shunned by one of our trainers, And uh, but I picked up on him. And I had a conversation with him and you know, I listened to him. I didn't shun him. I listened to him. He was about 205 pounds. Uh, he was fresh, just fresh out of the streets. And he told me what his dream was and what he wanted to do. So I grabbed him and I started taking him personally. I, tra I started training him. And then little by little, he started training back with the team. And then little by little, he started training with our pro coaches, myself and our pro coaches, Kenny Finister that we have here. Uh, and... Um, now Jimmy is a 10 fight pro, seven wins, seven knockouts, and he is a beacon and a light, and he loves his daughter Mila so much that this man will not veer. He works six to eight hours every single day because he knows it's for her future. Now he no longer glorifies the streets, no longer glorifies any type of drugs or alcohol or any gang banging. The man is a productive member of society, which we were able to see transform here at the House of Pain. Amazing. It's amazing. It, he, and he is truly amazing. He fights on um, August 16th, Friday night. We're going to have a big, uh, a, a big Friday night uh, fights at Saboba Casino. Wow. I'm going to go deep into next time with you about the casinos. I have a lot of questions on the casinos and the whole strategy of putting casinos into reservations, mm -hmm. which I'll discuss with you. I know it's a big money churner, and I love uh, what they do, but uh, not good for the society generally. And we'll talk about that later on. But for viewers, this was Dave, House of Pain, in Temecula, a proud Native American. So I'll see you in the next show. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Adi. And Appreciate you. See.